Hi guys, my name is Dominique Jackson and I'm with the Maker Movement Series and today we're going to explore the brick by brick exhibit at the Museum of Science and Industry. John, what were some of your favorite toys um, playing with growing up as a kid? Of course I played with a Lego or two, but primarily I built balsa wood model airplanes. Okay, awesome. Anything else? And I also did model railroads. Okay. Um, I designed the model railroad here at the Museum of Science and Industry, too. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. And so how have children and adults responded to the um, interactive activities that you guys have in this exhibit? They're going hog wild, as you can see here. Um, we've got hundreds of kids working with Legos, uh, building things uh, to test them on uh, seismic shakers and wind tunnels and little fine wood derby simulators and all kinds of stuff. So they're really getting into it. That's awesome. And how have you guys incorporated um, technology to connect with the visitors in this exhibit? Um, the key, key idea of the exhibit is uh, play is the gateway to greatness. So we want to show that technology and innovation is all based on creativity and play. So when designers try to solve a problem, they come up with different alternate solutions and there's a lot of play involved in that creativity, whether you're building models or drawing pictures or just kind of spitballing ideas, there's a lot of open-ended play involved in, in that. Yeah, and uh, what do you hope that people walk away with from this exhibit? Um, I hope that they come, come out of the exhibit with a little bit more of an open-ended idea towards play um, in their own life and an attitude that they can create things on their own, whether or not they're artists or designers. Yeah, and what are some must-see things that people have to come and see when they visit this exhibit? Uh, well, the must-see things are the Lego models. We've got a 60-foot yeah. Golden Gate Bridge and a roller coaster and uh, Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world made in Lego, plus all kinds of hands-on interactives too to kind of to build it yourself too. Yeah. And do you have any last thoughts or comments that you would like to share? Um, just that play is the gateway to greatness. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. When were you first inspired to pursue this career? When was I first inspired yeah. to pursue this career? Actually, this started in 2001 with an idea, okay. but I actually did not start picking up bricks until 2006. Okay. So I was an architect for about 15 years in Chicago. And in 2001, um, obviously, 9-11 was uh, a point in our time in history um, that affected me a lot, as it affected many people. Not only did we lose 3,000 lives that day, um, but as an architect, we also lost a lot of great buildings that day. I believe that 12 or 14 buildings were permanently destroyed, not just the Twin Towers. And so, being in Chicago, I was trying to figure out how can I contribute to that loss. Um, obviously not loss of life, but how, what, what can I do to turn a negative situation and, and turn it into something that we can grow from and be positive. And so I was doing high-end residential work in Chicago and you work kind of one-on-one -on -one with the client-owner relationship and um, I felt like maybe there's a deeper purpose for my, my career. and. I needed, I was at a point where I was getting complacent and I needed to start something new. So from 2001 to 2006, I had started thinking about going on my own and pursuing more of an artistic side of me, not just architecture. And I, one thing that I was always good at, I was terrible at illustrating. And I was in that weird spot in 96 when I graduated college where computers were not mandatory. So I was still old school, like hand drawing and making models. And so for me, one of my strengths uh, for my storytelling and architecture was building models. I was not very good at illustrating. I did a little bit, but my strength was really making models. And I missed that. And so I wanted to build models and share architecture with people. I wanted to figure out what can I do for 9-11. So all these kind of factors fell into place. And I realized that I'm going to take Lego bricks a child's toy and I'm going to repurpose them and create models so people can enjoy and so I went out to Toys R Us in Highland Park, Illinois. 
um, back in 2006 and I bought a bunch of Lego sets because I had no Lego. At the time I was 35 years old and needed to get reacquainted with the brick and I had this idea of using Lego bricks because it didn't require gluing or cutting. Yeah. It didn't require a skill to put them together. It just requires your imagination and creativity to figure out what to do with them. Mm -hmm. So as a model maker, because I consider myself a craftsman and a model maker at heart okay. and I want to tell stories of architecture and art and design and if I were to like metal to a blacksmith or paint to a painter if I was going to use a medium that required a skill then I could not inspire others to be creative because maybe you're not skilled at ceramics or glass blowing and if I use that medium then it wouldn't be very inspiring you could come and see my pieces and be wowed and blah 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 but that's not the point of my exhibits. They're not, my, my exhibits are not so you are amazed by the creations. Um, I'm not a very pretentious guy, actually. I try to be um, no one special who is trying to inspire people of all ages to think outside of the box and use Lego bricks to explore their imaginations in a three-dimensional realm. So that's what I try to do. And so, um, I built a version of the World Trade Center tower that collapsed and I started sharing. It was eight feet tall. It's currently in Iowa right now on display and um, that's what got me started. Actually that exhibit started here at the Museum of Science and Industry in 2006, uh, 2007 and, um, and that was my way of having people be exposed to the buildings and why they collapsed so they could learn why did those buildings fail. Because yeah. they were strong, people were scared of going in skyscrapers and I wanted to peel back so the building is exposed on one side so you could see the inner structure yeah. and understand and not just have something that children are gonna read out of a history textbook. You know, I wanted it to be um, more tangible. So that's what got me started in this career path. That's awesome. So you said Luggles is the only medium that you do work with? Yes. Okay, awesome. And so what fundamentals do you think Lego teaches children? There's a lot of fundamentals that LEGO teaches. Um, Eye-hand coordination, um, color uh, organization, shape organization, um, how you put things together. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's like a giant Rubik's Cube. I have in my head 14,000, a catalog of 14,000 elements yeah. that come in a range of 60 colors. And for me, it's problem solving. It's like, how do you build a bridge? How do you build a dam out of Lego? And knowing what are those combinations? And it's like a Rubik's Cube. You got to keep solving yeah. until you get it. And so, um, what's your favorite model that you built so far? Well, probably the fa my most favorite thing is the one that I have yet to do because that's okay. what keeps me going. Okay, so it's like, that's that's the challenge what's the next challenge that's what gets me interested in continuing this journey with the lego brick what is something that hasn't been done what is something i can do in a way that hasn't been done before but if you were to ask me what's my favorite piece here yeah it's the hoover dam model mm, and why is that? coincidentally the funny thing is is that is the one model that took me the least amount of time to okay. design and build so it kind of goes against logic to think well the one that's the biggest and the most time is the one that you like the most i mean yeah how like, long do these things take you to make on, on average i started all of this last uh march okay. so this this whole exhibit is a year's worth so of work whole exhibit? yeah oh so you're lego certified so a lego certified professional <laughs> basically is a title that's given to the 14 of us okay that is um you guys like all meet up and have conferences? Are you friends with the other 13? Once a year, once okay. A year we do, because we're all over. There's three in Asia, there's oh, one wow. in Australia. Oh, it's global. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's 14 in the world, so we the can't world. all be in Chicago, right? True. So there's three in the United States, there's one in Canada, there's yeah. four in the UK and Europe, one in Australia. So we're all scattered around. And basically, what we do is we um, celebrate the brick. In, um, in ways that the Lego company isn't currently doing, like they make toys, that's their focus. But we take their product and we pioneer and frontier new things to do with their toy. Okay. And so the Lego group has been wonderful supporting the LCP program to allow us to be the artist 
the creative people we are with their product. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, and so in some regards, since we're not employees, I would say as, as business partners, we're probably more trusted individuals okay. in, in many regards because we have to have a bigger freedom to operate. You know, they can't always be there seeing what we're doing. Obviously, we're always in touch with, with our contacts and representatives at LEGO, but, um, but for the most part, they, they're not here today, and so they're trusting me to represent the brand and their company in, in the, the same light that they do. Um, at corporate levels, and so, um, so yeah. Awesome. And then, do you have just any last thoughts or comments that you would like to share? I just hope that people come here and um, and 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 see that every model here is done in a certain way with an intention, and it's up to you, the viewer, to try and decipher what I'm trying to teach you. Okay. And I'll give you a hint: the Hoover Dam. Um, my inspiration for that was a documentary I saw that was filmed when it was being built and at that time in the 1930s at the height of the depression they only had black and white film footage and so my model here is all done in black and white and grays um, to pay homage to that time period and so that's kind of my artistic touch and hopefully when you come and see here and you notice that wait there's a lack of color why is that well it's because it's supposed to look like it was a snapshot done in black and white Okay, that's so awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.